Thank you very much, Nancy. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Yasunori Aizawa. Sorry. Coming. Could you switch? Yeah. Thank you very much. So again, my name is Yasunori Aizawa. Please call me just simply Yas. Uh, uh, yeah, I came from the other side of the North Hemisphere. <laughs> So it's kind of bedtime for me right now, but uh, please uh, focus on what I'm taking, telling right now. So uh, I think the, the my I still don't understand what pilot project means. <laughs> I was selected as one of the is like a suggestion suggestion people uh, about pilot project, but my interpretation is that <coughs> we are just showing our ideas, which will be very important for the future of the human genome project. And then maybe I'm correcting the people who are interested in this kind of theme. And then maybe we are making some small umbrella under the big umbrella of the GP Wright Consortium to push the first phase of this GP Wright project. That's my understanding, probably correct, right? Okay. <laughs> so the, my, my title is that scientific screening for essential introns and retro elements in the human and animal cells. So actually for uh, as a first, presentator of a pilot project uh, focusing on the human or other big genome synthesis project, I think my role is to remind you that the, uh, <coughs> the difference between the genomes that have been synthesized and the ones that are going to be synthesized. So here I, I show that the, uh, is there any pointers here? But anyway, so top panel and the bottom panel, so you saw that the uh, genome uh, browser, which has the same length, 300 k uh, kilobases there. And it's obviously on the top panel, you see the many, many genes in the east. There is roughly 160 genes there. So it's kind of a forest of genes there. On the other hand, the top panel, that this is the gen genome we are going to synthesize, is roughly only, there are only four genes there. And then the bottom part here, Many retro transposon sequences there. It's, uh, it's kind of, uh, it's derived from the uh, virus genes that, that jumped in the human genome during the long evolutionary time. So that the, um, and then so that the, I think the genome we are synthesizing right now is like this. And also, if you look at the gene structure there in human, there are many long introns. have introns. So that's the difference also. That's a big, big part of the difference between the yeast genome and the human gene, genome. So that, yeah, as you can see, it's a kind of uh, illustration always to show the difference of the ecosystem of the genome between the genome which has many genes and then which the ones has few genes. So that, yeah, the questions actually we have right now is to see and understand the ecosystem and then the design principle of how the genome under below are constructed. And then the approach I'm taking right now is very simple. Basically, we're making some mutant fragment which doesn't have an intron there, and then we replace the fragment into the wild type in a living chromosome. And in, in this case, we are removing some introns which exist commonly in all splice isoforms. And also another a mutant we're making is transposon-free fragment. So that way, in the beginning, we can test uh, these removal will impact on some expression of the genes, genes, target genes. In this case, you show that the P53 genes. And also we wanna see the expression of RNA level and also protein level, and also epigenetic status, and to see the effect of these junk DNA there. And also we are making, we, are, we have to use some uh, marker to <coughs> select out the genes which has a replacement. So we have, we have made this kind of marker build here. So actually uh, Harvard group, including Dr. Church, uh, already published this kind of marker, which used piggyback 
again, DNA transposon sequence, piggyback termina terminal repeat. So once we have that worker in the <coughs> living cells, by overexpressing some of the piggyback uh, enzyme there, you can eliminate the whole marker without any scar there. So basically, uh, we can just swap the wild type DNA part with the synthetic ones. And then the genes we are targeting first is the cancer-related gene in a human. There are roughly 250 genes uh, registered in some uh, cancer gene database. But in the beginning, we are focusing on these five genes, which are different in the length of the gene, like this. And then, uh, as Jeff mentioned, one of the purposes for the first phase of the GPRI project is techn technological development. So that, yeah, I think we are making some progress uh, and then solve the problem on some technical issues that we cannot see right now. And then once we develop the technique, maybe we want to apply the basic strategy to the different animal uh, system. And then the, this is the last slide. So of course, by doing this project, we want to see, we, we, we are going to see some principle how radio elements and introns sustain the ecosystem of the gene expression. But also, this is important for everybody in this room. For example, we can sof uh, sophisticate our genome design by learning patterns of disposable introns and radio elements. And also second, this is very important. By, repeating, by removing the repeats, we can reduce the risk and the labor at amplicon assembly and the sequencing check, which are troublesome for GP right <coughs> reader, right? And also, in the end, for example, if we can remove, remove the most part of retro elements, we can downsize the human genome, uh, the animal genomes, which save money, time, and labor. With that, I want to take questions. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, <clears throat> on which basis do you, do you believe that the introns and um, and uh, retro elements are dispensable in a in a live cell? Well, my guess is that probably uh, some research in Drosophila showed that uh, some introns had I'm sorry enhancer sequences for transcription. So that yeah, probably some of the introns are important for the expression regulation. Uh, and also, we know we have many reports on the, some important retro elements for gene expression. So that yeah, some of them would be very important. But as you know, roughly 300 million copies in the human genome of retro elements. So that yeah, probably most of them are not important for cells. But we don't know for the development. But uh, this is one of the key, actually, the concept for my project is that by removing the, these important factors, could, which could be important for the development in the first phase of the uh, research, maybe we don't have to touch upon the ethics part, probably. And then by doing the mouse project, maybe we can see some uh, elements which are important for development. But that could be different from the human process because retro elements are different between mouse and human. So yeah, so that's, that's my idea. So I have a kind of vague idea relating to this theme that you have exposed um, in thinking about um, interesting genome designs. Mm. Um, I think something that could be interesting, probably a bit drastic for the moment, would be to um, segregate, let's say, uh, a range in some chromosomes, a uh, very gene-dense uh, kind of configuration. And in the context of neochromosomes, uh, put all of these, uh, for example, introns or retro elements or regulatory regions, and um, allow for, um, for example, by adding log P sites, uh, allow for recombination to take place and just let this play out. Mm -hmm. And I would say that 
um, in, in the context of like an evolution experiment, I would say that if some regulatory or whatever transposon or introns are very important, they will be uh, rearranged and co-opted back into the uh, gene dense, let's say, uh, chromosomes. And I think that could be quite interesting <laughs> and a different way to try and understand which parts are very essential and which others are right. maybe more context dependent. No, I think but you it's very <laughs> Uh, yeah, drastic yeah, yeah. That's, that's all you're uh, like pursuing right now, right? So mm -hmm. by doing this. So mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, I think you are part of my uh, project right now. Uh, because, uh, <coughs> yeah, that's what, what we are, you know, there are many, many ideas and there are many hypotheses about the function mm -hmm. of the retro elements. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we, we want uh, to stick to the function of the cells. Mm -hmm. So the uh, function of the retro elements in the cell system. Yes. Yeah, yes. by doing this, I mean, maybe we can uh, tackle that kind of questions, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't have any idea yet. Yeah, I think it would be very, very challenging, but it would just be very interesting yeah, that, yeah, that's, to yeah. have this. That's like why I want to start with very small targeted gene regions yes. and then expand into the mm -hmm. whole genome scale. Mm -hmm. So it's time. So, OK, uh, if you're interested in, please grab me anytime during the, for the two days and then discuss this thing. Thank you very much. <laughs>